Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a new series. The series is called We're Standing on the Shoulders of Giants from Rui Lopez to Magnus Carlsen. What I want to do is show typical games of the greatest players in history. There's not only the world champions, the 16 world champions, official world champions we've known since 1886, but also the strongest players of their era before that. It all starts with Rui Lopez de Segura, who was seen as the best player of his era between 1560 and 1575. Chess was big in Spain, then Italy took over and we had Da Coutri and Boy and Salvio and Greco. Then the power of chess went to France with Legal de Carmeur and François André Danican Philidor. Alexandre de Chapelle and Louis Charles Maé de la Bourdinée. Beautiful name. Then it shifted to England where we had Howard Staunton, then Germany with Adolf Anderson, and of course the great American Paul Morphy. So I will show games of all these players in this series, starting with a game from Rui Lopez de Segura. Unfortunately, there are no games saved from Leonardo da Coutri. Paolo Boy and Alessandro Salvio. There are a few games but only the opening moves so it's not that interesting. So those three players there are number two, three and four I will very quickly cover with some biographical facts. And then from Greco onwards I will show games of each of these players. Then of course we have the official and undisputed world champions. Steinitz, Lasker, Capablanca, Aljochin, Oewe, Bodwinik, Smyslov, Tal, Petrojan, Spassky, Bobby Fischer, Karpov, Kasparov, Kramnik, Anand and the current world champion Magnus Carlsen. So 28 names and that will be 25 games. As I said I don't have games from Leonardo da Coutri, Paolo Boyd and Alessandro Salvio but of the others I will show a typical game and that will be this series which I call We're Standing on the Shoulders of Giants from Rui Lopez to Magnus Carlsen. But for this video I will show you the earliest recorded game from 1475. The 15th century Catalan poem Skax d'Amor describes a game of chess played between Venus and Mars and it describes a game of chess played between Francesco di Castelvi and Narciso Vignoles played in Valencia in Spain in 1475 and as I said it's the earliest recorded game played under modern rules. Not completely modern rules, castling did not exist yet at that time and it's very likely that if the queen was lost the game was lost as well and we'll see that happening in this game. Also if a pawn promoted it could only promote to a piece that was already captured. Let's have a look at that game, the oldest, earliest recorded game of chess. White de Castelvi, Black Vignoles. E4, D5, which we know as the Scandinavian defense or the center counter gambit, it already existed at that time. E takes D5, Queen takes D5, Knight c3 attacking the queen and the queen went back to d8. Nowadays we see queen a5 or queen d6 as an alternative but also queen d8 is still played. Bishop c4, knight f6, knight f3, bishop g4 which is a mistake and here white could have played knight e5 because if you then take the queen there is bishop takes f7 checkmate but either white did not see this or the rule that i talked about before that if you lose your queen you lose the game prevented white from playing this we'll never know white played h3 instead, bishop takes, queen takes and e6 not worried about losing a pawn 
on b7. Queen takes, the rook is hanging, so knight bd7, knight b5, attacking the c7 pawn twice, so rook c8, and knight takes a7. Attacking the rook, probably rook b8 would have been better here, but Vignola has played knight b6. Knight takes the rook, knight takes back, and d4. That pawn can't be taken because the knight on c8 would be hanging. So knight d6, forking queen and bishop. So bishop b5 check, that bishop was taken, queen takes b5 check, and knight d7. d5. Upon sacrifice to open lines against black's king. Very good play. e takes d5, bishop e3, bishop d6, and now a logical move is to castle either kingside or queenside, but as I said, that did not exist yet in 1475. Castling was not a rule that was implemented yet. So rook d1. And also black cannot castle, so queen f6, rook takes pawn, queen g6, eyeing up the g2 pawn. White ignores that and plays bishop f4. Now black can take on g2, but even stronger is queen e4 check. And then you would say that queen e2 would be the best reply for white, but maybe not, because as I said, there was also this rule that if you lost your queen, you lost the game, and if you play queen e2 with white and black takes, then black would win the game based on that rule. So maybe in that case, white had to play king d1, and then for example, queen takes f4, and even though white is still better because of the unsafe black king, Rook e1 check is a good move here. At least black has one material back. But Vignoles took on f4 and fell into a mate in two. Queen takes d7 check, king f8, and queen d8 was checkmate. A sudden finish of this game. So it was this game that was used to write this poem and that's also probably why this game has been preserved. No other games from that 15th century have been preserved. Hope you like this game, the earliest recorded game of chess with the modern rules. And I hope you will like this new series. You can tell me if you do or if you don't. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I'm looking forward to seeing your comments. You also may want to check out my other channel, Chess to Progress, where I do series on viewers' games, on tactics, on end games, and on the classics, with the idea to help viewers getting better at this beautiful game. This is Rick from Chess to Impress. Thank you very much for watching.